Yes, sir, baby. On the radar, yo. Special guest in the building. Houston in the building. He just bodied that freestyle. One take. Shit. Ho shit. Marcus Clay in the building, my guy. What's the deal, my guy? show. Appreciate you, Clay. Thank and we kind of got like the same hat on. We both got like the same stitching on. I don't know which. Oh no, nah. it's, it's on the. It's on this side. I definitely came prepared to fuck with my boy, so it all worked out for the better. You bought that fresh off the flight? Nah, I bought it a day before I left. <laughs> You Facts. did? Facts. That's funny Facts. as fuck. You was like, I gotta come. I like it's funny because like um damn, I'm trying to think of like the other New York the other out of town artists who came here, but um they came here and they're like, oh like, yeah, they're like I had to come through with the with the Yankee fitted when I came to New York. I forgot who it was. Uh do you remember Rob Skinny Guy? Yeah, well he, he's like when I when I forget things, I'm just like Rob Rob will probably remember. But it's right. funny how like like uh out of town artists are like, oh I gotta come correct. Yeah. Cause like sure. I wear an astro shit in Houston. Nah, for sure. Now nah, I love the Yankees fitted though. Like this ain't my fur. I got Body like 10, honestly, like 10 New York fittings. Oh, really? Different colors and shit, so for sure. I just fuck with the, the aesthetic of it. You know, Are you a big Hove fan? Because I know you talk about Pac, you talk about Pac and no. Kendrick a lot, but... Hove is like, he's the he's the blueprint, literally, for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to, me and my mom used to listen to Hove with no furniture and just a radio, just a boom, but like a radio in an apartment when it first, when Blueprint first came out, so... I was influenced by Hove at the earliest age. Really? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. The whole Rockefeller, like, Beans, State Prop, like, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Did you live... Uh, so, you're from Houston, but... Have Born you, and raised. I never lived nowhere you else. You never lived nowhere else. Okay, Houston, that was what yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah, I spent time other places, but strictly Houston. Born and raised my whole life. Where else did you spend time at? Like, Appaloosa's. Um, you know, working in L.A., you know what I'm saying? Mm. Just being out there for a while. But um, Houston is the is the hub. Where you know in what Houston? Saying? South Houston, South South Southside Houston. Houston, most cities, Southwest, back and forth between those areas. Okay, I'm trying, because I've been to Houston like, I think like four or five times, so I'm like, whenever, I'm I'm getting to the point now where I'm starting to understand <laughs> the city, you know when you've right. like been somewhere a couple times, you start to understand the city a little bit more? Right. Is that like, so the South, like where's the Galleria in terms the Galleria of- Galleria is, mid, it's like, not Midtown, but it's, it's like Southwest, but okay. like Upper, like Upper. So you're like you know Southeast or- Nah, South, South, South most city is Southwest, okay. but it separates, it's a train track. It's a mm. track that's literally separated. Like one side you'll be on Fungin, it's the street in Houston, you'll be Fungin the southwest side. Yeah. And then one side you'll be on Fungin closer to Brygate, okay. Mo City, like Independence. So it's Houston is weird though. You know what I'm saying? It's big, but it's small at the same time. Yeah, it's interesting because like the few times that I've been there, it's like, you know, you could go from like the medical center area of Houston mm -hmm. and then like, you know, you, you drive maybe like five minutes like west or whatever, and then you're in like this the suburban college area too. Yeah, yeah like, probably like Rice Village. Yeah. Something exactly. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, Rice right. Village. Yeah. Then if you go the other way, you'll be in the trenches, you know? Yeah. OSC. If you take oh you can you can take OSC all the way down and you could be in the medical center or if you stay on OSC and make a right, you can be on Scott. MLK, Griggs, you know, mm -hmm. H-Town shit. H-Town you know shit, saying? yeah. For no, sure. I mean, like, you know, it's like it's like any city, like New York, H-Town, nah, sure. whatever. Like, you go, like, one block can make a difference. Because, like, Absolutely. last time I stayed there, I stayed there in a, we had, like, a house, uh, a b and &B. I forgot exactly what area it okay. was in, but I remember that it was, like, driving there. It was like, oh, shit, like, is this house in the trenches? Mm. And I looked at my mans. I said, wow. I said, what did you do, right? And then, like, I, we went a couple more blocks, and it was in, like, in a completely different area. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, yeah, this shit just like, and then I was like, oh, yeah, this shit just like New York. Nah, for sure. <laughs> and, and right now, they're doing a lot of gentrification, like. I noticed, yeah. In one of the, uh, with well, two of the most oldest areas in Houston, Third Ward and Fifth Ward, okay. it's a lot of building up that they're doing. But if you pay attention, it's surrounded by, like, old shit, like, hood shit, but they're trying to gentrify it, so. We, we we trying to get it together, you know what I'm saying? But niggas forget that we're the fourth largest city in America, though. Right. Yeah, so. And you guys got, like, 50-something hospitals in your city. Yeah, nah, for sure. We got the best medical center in the United States, in the world. People come all over the world to go to Texas, like, Texas Children's, like, mm. the best children's hospital in the, in the world, absolutely. I was uh, I had this guy here a couple like two three months ago, Cam Wallace. I don't know if you're familiar. Yeah, yeah, with Cam yeah that's, that's my boy. Yeah. Cam, that's my nigga for sure. Yeah, Cam was here, um, and it was funny because Cam, because <laughs> after I, Cam still hits me up and asks me when I'm coming to Houston first, right. first and foremost. But like it was funny because Cam was like, "Yo, bro, you should come move to Houston." Because every time I go to Houston, I'm like, I don't want to leave. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I went to uh, there was somebody who I went to college with. We went to like her apartment, and I was just like. God, I was like, how much you pay for this? And when she told me, I was like, yeah, nah, that's like a shack in New York. <laughs> nah, facts. Nah, for sure. Definitely. But it's since a lot of people are moving there now, the the, mm. the inflation is it's inflating, the lights mm. rising. So you're starting to see that. Yeah, for sure. Cause a lot of people are moving from all over. Like the city getting super packed. It was already packed, but like now yeah. it's dumb traffic. Shit is fucking crowded everywhere. People coming from all over. Come to the city, man. So growing up in Houston, right? So you mentioned like you listened to Hove early. Did you have like a lot of Southern influences too? Absolutely, like, was, man. Um, was it big? Were you big on that also? Absolutely. You know, coming from Houston, 
our culture, you know, we, we play songs on the radio that's not getting played across, you know, like a mainstream, you know, like- Oh, a, I noticed. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, a noticed. lot of people be like, damn, like, um, so I heard somebody say they came to Houston one time and they was in the club mm -hmm. and they was dropping records and he seen everybody singing these records, but he didn't know one fucking word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So our culture is big for sure within us. So if you from Houston, you got to respect like- SUC screwed up click, you know what I'm saying? Yep. I was big on that. You know, Scarface is one of the greatest rappers of all time. Mm. He's from Houston, you know what I'm saying? Ghetto Boys and shit, Devin the dude. But definitely, man, uh, Lil Kiki, Fat Pat, J Dog, Big Hawk, like some of my favorites from the city. Right. Who um who who laid and made a platform for us? You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's interesting because you're like when you you brought the club stuff and it made me look at I was at Seaside and and Zero too. Shout out Zero. Zero. I, yeah, shout out sure. Zero. Sure um, I well, zero. I've been to the well one. You know, you bring up all those names and a lot of those names were at uh, I think one of the first Astro Worlds. Yeah. And I was there. They did like the Houston All Star. Yeah, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I thought was fire. And I right. think that was like the coolest one of the coolest parts of the festival for me is because like you know I'm from New York. Right. So like I know obviously the bigger artists that from Houston. I know Screw. Absolutely. Paul Wall. Obviously, like I know like all Slim the greats. Thug. Slim right. Thugs, right. of course, the mm -hmm. Slim Thugs of the world. Um, but like seeing like that part of the culture, I thought was really dope for me. And when I was at Seaside, the last time I was in Houston, which was like last November, I remember like I was just I was in the club and I'm like, damn, like well, one talking about like the Houston artists that they play that mm -hmm. like everybody knows the words from, and it's just like a bunch of New York motherfuckers sitting in the corner like smoking, lost. Luka, like lost in the Super sauce, lost. Well, extremely lost. I was so confused, but I was enjoying myself. Don't get me wrong, they play some New York songs later, but, right? Um, but then also like I I I'm like damn like. This is the most like Lil Wayne, Money Bag, yo, like mm -hmm. even like we're talking about like you know those type of artists. Like this is the most like I've ever heard them played in parties too. And I don't spend a lot of time in the South, but when I now that I see it and I heard of it, I thought mm -hmm. it was so interesting because like I never got that like different club dynamic yet because I spent all my time up here. Right. So I thought I thought it was pretty cool because I was like, oh, I'm getting like that different type of like music experience mm -hmm. that I don't ever get, and I didn't even know that it was really like that until I went down there. I just assumed every place was like New York. Nah, it's different, bro. It's definitely different, but it's 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 home. You know what I'm saying? It's what made me who I am. Yeah, shout out Houston. I might buy a condo or some shit down there. Sure. I love Houston. For sure, sure. So when you first start, how long have you um, been rapping for, like, officially, like, taking shit seriously? <sighs> Man, I've been rapping my whole life, bro, honestly, since I was I was mumbling and not saying words on beat since before I could speak, so. Okay. Um... Your mom had you going crazy man, with that little Jay Z in the man, boombox, come on, right? Man, that's what I'm saying. Like, and she was an artist too, so I was okay. watching her early. So I did my first freestyle at four, but I've been rapping like since I was two, professionally taking it serious since ten, mm -hmm. and I'm 22 now. So. Taking it seriously since ten is kind of crazy. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so who did she put you in the booth then? Because she was an artist herself, or man, actually, you know what was crazy? It started with me being in the back seat. Okay, just ride. You know, my mom used to ride with her homeboys or whatever smoking and shit and just freestyling on instrumentals. So we just riding one day and I'm in the back seat of the car mumbling though. Just in my own world, just but on beat though. You know what I'm saying? And my mom homeboy, Lil C, he was like, damn my name Brandon. He was like, Brandon, this nigga is flowing, but he not saying shit, but he's on beat. Like he's catching the beat. Mom was like, huh? So we'll go to the studio and I would get in the booth myself and climb up on like a stool and put the headphones in and just go hard and just freestyle on some music shit. And, that, and my mom was like, normally a parent would be like, nigga, you need to stay in school. This ain't for you. My mom was like, nah, nigga, my son gonna be the truth. And she just took it and ran with it. Mm. She was the first, like, literally the first person to really believe in me. My uncle, too, you know what I'm saying? I was performing. And he went to Prairie View. I don't know if you heard of Prairie View. Mm -hmm. and then Prairie View College, uh, one of the biggest HBCUs in Texas. Okay. Um, One of the most notable. And I was freestyling for all his partners and shit at a young age. So <laughs> he was just like, they seen it in me as as a young and I've been had it. And um I started to take it serious the older I got, but still being a child though. So it was it was crazy. That's interesting. So if, uh, we obviously fast forward into now, right? You're signed to Def Jam, which is you know incredible. Congratulations, of course. Appreciate you. Um, how did you first get discovered by Def Jam? Like how did that first come about for you? Man, freestyling. Freestyling, freestyling in, okay. in, in the car. Freestyling in the car. Um and then I started doing this segment, first and fifteenth segment where I would make a beat myself mm. and then rap over it oh that's tough yeah and then the senior vice president shout out to my boy he seen me and he dm'd me and was like yo well he commented up under my picture at first was like yo check it dm I'm like who the fuck is this i'm thinking it's spam so yeah. i click the nigga page and i say and I, and I see svp of dev jam so i'm like all right who is this trying to nigga trying to hack my page or something so i ignored the shit because i'm thinking it's a you know a, a fake account and he dm'd me and was like yo bro i'm interested like fuck with me like mm -hmm. he sent his number and I remember it was it was funny because I told my mom, I was like, man, 
No, he asked me, he was like, are, are you ready to talk? And my mom was like, I went and told my mom, and she was like, yeah, nigga, you ready to talk right now? And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. I am ready to talk right now. So I called his phone, and he was like, yeah, man, you know, I'm seeing everything you're doing or whatever. I fuck with you. I'm interested. And two weeks later, he flew to Houston. We had dinner. And after that, we was discussing paperwork. But he was just raw. Like, I wasn't signed off for of numbers or, you know, the a buzz. And, like, he mm -hmm. just seen a talent, and he fucked with it. And that's why I respect 2 to this day. You know what I'm saying? That's he took a fire. Chance. Yeah, for sure. So you got, you got signed off, like, well, initially off of... Freestyle. Yeah, of raw, raw talent. Like it wasn't like numbers going crazy, none of that mm -hmm. shit. Like two O was like, you got it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And then when he was like, you 20, because I was 20 at the time, turning 21, he was like, ah, oh, nigga, let's go. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. Because you don't always, you don't always see that nowadays. Like nah. signing people off talent, you not see at people all. People signing off numbers, which Wait. isn't like a bad thing either. Right. But there's also like the the art of just like. Buying the talent, yeah, buying yeah. the talent first, whether they have good numbers or not. I mean, like, I, I look know. at it like everybody's journey is different. Everybody's Facts. journey is meant for them. So mine happened the way it happened, and you know, we 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 own that journey now. Right. I know you like you've spoken about like like Master P, but how does Master P fit into like this? How did you how did that connection, that relationship build? Man, I met P in the airport, bro. Uh, That's in, mad funny. Yeah, <laughs> super funny, bro. In LA, going back to Houston, um, I seen him. And I didn't think it was him at first. I just looked and I was like, damn, look like P. And I looked, I was like, damn, that is P. And I told my mom, I was like, man, I'm finna go chop it up and walk up to him and just let him know who I am. Like, I wasn't looking for no situation, no nothing. I wasn't looking for nothing from him. I just wanted him to know who Marcus Clay was. So mm -hmm. I walked up on him and was like, yo, P, I respect your mind. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with your shit. I fuck with your how you hustle. I'm a young nigga from Houston. Marcus Clay, woo woo. I just want you to hear some shit. Just tell me if you fuck with it or not. I wasn't looking to get in business with him or nothing. And I played him a record, and he was like, I'm going to fly you back out here two weeks later. Wow. Same shit. Like, basically, the same, almost a similar story to the Def Jam shit. And after that, it was up with P. You know what I'm saying? So that was more like, that's more like, like of a mentorship thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And P, P is a good dude, man. He's a, um, he, he's, a, uh, he's a big motivation. And, you know, he's just going to drop jewels all the time. He's going to give you game. So I respect him for sure. I ain't going to lie. I Mad just like watching form. Master P interviews just for the just for Yeah, the, the jewels. Nah, for sure. He's definitely smart, super intelligent. And um, he inspired me just coming from the South, you know, and just do, doing what he did, becoming a mogul. Like, that was inspiring. You know do you have saying? a favorite jewel of his? Yeah, he was like, uh, he, one thing he told me that stood out was never stop working. You know, no matter if you reach a certain level, hard work always beats talent and just nice. stay shooting. You no, know, stay in the stay in the studio. Just stay, stay working. You know what I'm saying? I peeped. Um, I saw. Uh, uh, you know, the good sis, Ken the man. Y'all have y'all know each other too, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. First of all, going. She's going crazy right yeah, now. Super hard. Double show. Sure. Super hard. Definitely. Is it just the that's just like a, a Houston thing? Nah, nah, nah. Ken is Ken is dope. All all the way around. Okay. You know what I'm saying for sure. No, I'm just saying Absolutely. like how y'all met. Is that just like yeah? Oh no 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 no. We met through a mutual friend who okay. was working with her at the time, and are still working with her. Um. And we just connected from there. You know what I'm saying? I want to see y'all do some. Yeah, nah, for sure. Nah, we, we got some shit in the vault. We got some shit in the vault for sure. Because I feel like I've been getting like an influx of Houston artists lately. Because I had her on, I think like I think last October. Mm -hmm. So it's cool, like starting to see like this new generation of like Houston rappers starting to mm -hmm. starting to kind of like up. move the needle and like link for up. Sure. And she, like when I saw she followed you, I was like, I was, that was like also I was like I was like, oh yeah, this guy he like he's he's got to be fired. Like you know what I'm nah, saying? Nah, for like, sure. He, nah, you know what I'm saying? That's my doubt. For sure. And so we got we're getting ready for this album, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, when we're recording this, we're like about a month out from the album, but I'm going to put this out like probably like the week of the album. Cause I think like, you know, I want to help with the promo of it and shit like that. Cause right. I feel like it's going to be incredible. Right. Call the Mecca. Yes, sir. Why the Mecca? It's hip hop through my eyes, basically. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I just wanted to, you know, showcase a different, a different sound, not even just a different sound, but like a different feeling of a young artist from the South mm. who actually has something to say. And who understands the importance of making an impact with records and just sustaining a certain, you know, a, a, a aura about myself just as an introduction. You know what I'm saying? So it's basically nice. hip hop through my eyes at this time and um, just giving it to him the rawest way, you know? Anybody on it with you? August 08. August 08. Yeah. That's it. That's it. The only one. That's it. Is there a reason why? I mean, not really. I just, when I get in, I just be working. You know, I don't okay. think about features or nothing like that. You know, I just get in and just tackle it. Word. We got two singles sure. out for that right now. The right. Yeah, the, not the, the. 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 And um, it's not out when we're recording this, but Studio Gangsters is gonna be. Studio Gangsters coming. Yeah, that's a single from the tape. 
he drops these money. What is um? What's the idea behind Studio Gangsters? Because I feel like the name itself is just kind of man. It's basically it's basically you know talking about what a lot of people have capitalized on in a false manner. You know what I'm saying? It's basically within the song. I'm just ex speaking from my experience of not being not wanting to be a studio gangster and to tell people that be, you know to be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't gotta lie on the record or lie on wax because there's people in real life situations that's going through the stuff that you're lying about, saying that you're doing and mm. people losing their lives, you know, to the gun violence or to the prison system. Right. Really out here doing this shit and you, you know, you rapping about it to sell records. It's mm. not it's not smart, you know what I'm saying? And I just wanted to make a record conveying that in the way I could, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's a big topic nowadays. Too. Nah, it like, is. You know, it is. Like rapping about shit that you're living about, rapping about shit that you're not living about, right. vice versa. Are you actually doing, are you not? Um, and then like people's opinions and the way people kind of like view artists who are either living or not living and rapping about it. Right. I mean, to each his own, but you know, I yeah, just, facts. I'd rather be yourself. You know, I'd rather you be yourself. Which but is what P what told you. Which is part of probably what P told you as well, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, P comes from that. P comes from, you know, the the, the streets. So he, and I, that's why I respect him because, you know, he raises kids and he teaches the youth. It's always something better than that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I respect it. I also want to ask you this, bro. I see you're very passionate about people wearing jackets in the summertime. Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, you went on my Twitter. Yeah, I definitely, went, I definitely went on your Twitter. Sure. First of all, yo, this boy be tweeting a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. First of all, I like and I like artists that I bring on who tweet a lot because they be talking because they always be talking some shit that I could bring up in an interview. For sure. And this is one of those things. You're very passionate and very upset about people wearing jackets in the in the summertime. I don't understand <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't get it either. To bro, be honest with you, is I, I see them. You know, you 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 sweating from your head. Like I know you musty. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit. That's not playing, bro. <laughs> if you know it's, it's not play, you if you know it's hot outside, what's some appropriate, man? Why are you killing your? You killing yourself? You're killing yourself in a hundred degree weather, mm -hmm. and it's young niggas. I was a young nigga, but it's like I'm still a young nigga, but it's niggas that's it's, it's these teenagers, man. I'm like, damn. Like I, I was actually telling my manager, I was at the corner store and I hopped out the car and it was like a hot. It was like a hundred, and I seen some young niggas outside with hoodies on, and I had to tell them like, take that, like, come on, man, like, like, take them off, bro. Like, like, take the you hoodie told out. Them to take I told him, like, it was about three or four, like, young niggas. I was like, man, just take them, take them jackets out. They was laughing, but I was dead serious. Like, come on, man, you gonna, you'll pass out. It's not cool. <laughs> it's not cool at all. What's the, what's the little baby line? Is wearing some, something about wearing hoodies in the summertime. I know what you're talking about. I can't you know remember what exactly. I'm yeah, about, right? I can't remember it's exactly. A hummus, though. It's the summer still got my hoodie on. Yeah. Some, some yeah. shit like that. Nah, yeah, but some of these niggas, they. They got them on for different reasons, you know. I was going to say, to each their own. To, to each his own, their own on that. I wouldn't, you know, I ain't I ain't out here like that. So you ain't going to see me with no hot-ass jacket on. And it's uh, <laughs> 95 degrees outside. No, nah, I definitely had a couple artists here these past couple months. Like, we're in the summertime. It's August uh, 8th when we're recording this. And I've had artists come here during the summertime. And I'm like, bro, like, I got to go get you towels in the back now. God bless him. Cause your forehead is like it's glistening. Hey, like God I can see him. my reflection in that shit right now. Nah, for sure. I, I, God bless him, man. <laughs> God forgive them for they know not what they do. <laughs> like I get. Look, don't trust me. I get it. Fashion, like you know, yeah. we all we all want to be fly. I don't own a lot of summer clothes. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, right. I, you know, you live in Houston, so the weather's for a little sure. flip floppy sometimes. Right, right. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. New York is very much like hot or cold, right? And I mostly only have cold weather clothes. I don't right. really got a lot of summer clothes, but you still will not. I will wear the same shirt multiple times throughout the summertime before I would throw on a fucking North Face jacket in the summertime just Can't for fashion. Do Can't do it, bro. And I'm not on bad timing either. So, like, if you're not on bad timing, why the fuck are you wearing a jacket or a hoodie like that in the summertime? I, I don't know. Even if you're on bad wild. timing, I, I think I get it, but... Niggas wildin', man. They bugging out. Super. Do you also, like, so for you, because another tweet I saw, you were tweeting about Pac, right? Mm hmm Pac is your goat. Mm hmm Why? Absolutely. Why Pac? The feeling. You know, some people... They, they, would, they, would, they would think flip otherwise. Flop, but um, the, the, the feeling, the, the emotion, the, the rawness, what Pac stood for, and just the way... Mm -hmm. I feel when I hear the nigga music, you know, I was, it's crazy because I always say like Pac and Big, Pac died in 96, Big died in 97, I was born in 99. Mm -hmm. And it just shows how great that they are because it's like in a time where I wasn't alive, I didn't even exist, those guys made music so dope that after they were gone, like when I was eight, nine years old, 2008, 2009, I was dissecting and hearing their music and was like, damn, these niggas is, is crazy, you know what I'm saying? Because normally... 
a lot of people would say Tupac is their goat who lived to see him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Who was yeah, alive. Yeah, people you know, alive you know to see him. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, caught, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like the Jordan and Kobe thing. Like, I wasn't in Jordan's era. Kobe Bryant is my goat because I actually watched Kobe play live. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I never seen a Jordan game live to remember. You know, when the Wizards, I was three, four years old. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's like, Pac was um, the emotion, man. Like, the way he delivered his words, I conveyed his message, he was just unmatched to me. You know, it's just my opinion. He's the greatest of all time to me. Right. I feel you, because I was born in 96, so. Okay. I I think, I don't, was I born after Pac died? I think I was born after Pac died. He died September 13th. Oh, no, I was, born, I was born a month before. Okay. Like a month before Pac died. Okay. And then obviously, you know, I was too, I was a baby when, when Biggie died right, too. Right, right. So I didn't even get to like experience any of that shit too. Right. So to, but like, I still, obviously being from New York, right. you know what I'm saying, Biggie is, Biggie is the GOAT. You feel Come me? Pac and Biggie's. Come on, it's, it's nobody. Right there, right yeah, there. Sure but it it is interesting, like, being, like, these ages and, like, you know, what, 22, 26, and mm-hmm. it's just, like, it's weird because we're talking about this shit even though we weren't there at the We weren't there for... That shows their, their impact, man. It shows how great yeah. they were. Well, I was how, there, but I wasn't actually there. Right, right, <laughs> no, nah, for sure. No, nah, I, I didn't even fucking exist. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so it was just, like, yeah, Pac for me, for sure. Pac for you. So Mecca's out um, September 9th. Yep. Um... What else you got coming up that the people got to be on the look for, look out for that, and got to be in tune with? Uh, my new single, Studio Games, are dropping this month. The Mecca Project, and just mode, you know, dope music, man, videos, and just content. You know, we we, we finna go crazy. It's only the beginning. Word, man. Well, congratulations on everything. Uh, Studio you. Gangsters and the out now. No, Studio Gangster drops this month. Well, no, but we're but by the time this drops, oh yeah, you're right. It's gonna be out. Okay, so well, fuck that part. Fuck that part. We gonna take that out. Or we can leave it in there. I like being my shit like yeah, sure. raw and uncut, but, but it's well, out. Fuck it in. Fuck. I fucked up. Studio Gangsters out now. Um, the out now. The yes, Mecca sir. or Mecca, sorry, Mecca out September 9th. Um, let the people know where they can follow you out. Anything else you want to let them know? Now is the time to do it. This camera right here. Yo, it's Marcus Clay Sparta. Make sure you tap in on all socials. M A R Q U S C L A E. It's Marcus Clay. Not Marquise Clay. Not Marquis Clay. <laughs> not Marcus Clee. Not Marcus Clay with a Y. It's C L A E. Creating legacy all day, every day. It's an acronym. It means something. Mm. Marcus Clay. Wait, give me the acronym one more time. Creating legacy all day, every day. Creating legacy all day, every day. C L A E. That's fire. Appreciate it. Well, make sure you go follow him. Mecca out September 9th. Go show the boys some love. Go show the boys some support. Love and support is free, but y'all already knew that. Houston in the building. Until next time, it's on the radar. My guy, appreciate you, bro. Like, love. Dude.